right? We're almost ready to go. There's eight of us. My coffee, I think, just finished. So we're almost ready to go. Um, before, before we begin, just to go, I guess, over some, uh, some scheduling things. Today is May the 5th. So happy Revenge of the 5th, everybody. And happy belated May the 4th. Uh, if it's not obvious, I'm a, a bit of a Star Wars fan. So uh, some of the important days of the year just happen. Um, the end of this week on Friday, uh, we have our quiz on 6.4, 5, and 6. And that's the last quiz of the year. So yay, that's, that's really good. Good news. The last homework assignment of the year is due on Monday, and that's on section 7.1 and 7.2, uh, which is uh, which is on trigonometric identities and uh, uh, well, that's ba that's what that's what they're both on. Uh, one of them's on addition and subtraction identities, and one's on uh, sort of uh, fundamental identities, I would say, or uh, maybe not fundamental, but uh, one step removed fundamental identities. And um, right, so that's due Monday, and then Tuesday next week we don't have class actually, but that's the last day of classes for all the classes. Um, so you, if you have classes on Tuesdays, you still go to it on that on next week Tuesday. You so just don't skip it because you think classes are over. But um, I'll still have office hours on that Tuesday, and that'll be the last scheduled time uh, that I have with you for office hours. If you want to schedule another time with me during finals week, that's great, that's fine. Um, the mock final exam is, is already up online, and you can start working through that in your spare time for studying, uh, in addition to studying other material. Um, uh, I have free reign to decide which two days we can make the final, um, so I can I can put a poll out to you guys uh, today which days are best. It'll be two days right next to each other. Um, so it can be either Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday. Um, it does not really matter to me. The only thing that might matter is that that Saturday, uh, that's the 15th, the last day, if, if you all opt for like a Thursday, sorry, for a Friday, Saturday, uh, final exam. I'm going to be on the road that Saturday, uh, so I won't be available for help. Um, so um, when when there's more people, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a poll question right now. Seems like a good way to to get your responses. Um, and I'm going to make it multiple choice so that you can select multiple ones just to sort of say any of these are good, right? If you pick those, they're all good. Um, but if you just have one preference and all the others are terrible for you, then you can just select one. So the options, I believe, are again Wednesday to Thursday, Thursday to Friday, Friday to Saturday. It's the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, okay. ready. We're at 10 people. I'll give that question a little bit later um, just so we can get more people. Um, I'm not hearing anyone pop out with any questions about anything. Uh, let me let you think about it for a second. I'm going to run and grab that cup 
and I'll be right back. Um, so think, while I don't have my headphones on, I won't be able to hear you. So if you want to ask a question in the chat, that's great. I'll be right back. Nothing about uh, chapter six or chapter seven. Nothing about the final. Great question. Um, no, I'm not going to overemphasize chapters six and seven just because we haven't tested on them. Um, does, okay, so I, the final could have questions from them, um, but it'll be a uniform possibility. So chapter one, chapter two, six, and seven, and all the others, they all have sort of equal chances um, of getting questions asked from them. So, okay. I know some, I know from my, my past when things like this have happened where we're not tested over a specific set of chapters, um, when the final comes up there's like this special section of the final where it's like this is just six and seven to make sure you got it. And then the rest like the last half is everything else. I'm not going to do that. No. How many questions will this test have? That's a very good question. It'll be just like all the others where there's um, a section of true false and then a section of short answer. And I'm going to make it again so that there's four points per short answer and two points per true false. Uh, but I'm going to adjust the uh, adjust the number of true false for this one. It's going to be more true false than the previous ones, which had 10. Uh, I'm thinking close to 15 true false, uh, and that gives us 30 points. So don't hold me hold me to this, but I was thinking close to 15 true false, which is 30 points, and then that gives us how many points left over 70, and that is not divisible by four. <laughs> so I'm going to have to adjust this already. But close to 70 points awarded for that. And if you divide this by four. Uh, that's, you know, um, too shy of, of 20. So about 18 or so parts of short answer questions. So if you'll remember, if I asked a question like 1, A, B, dot, 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 every part was worth four points in previous tests. I'm going to do the same thing. Right, so there will be 18 parts of questions. Um, but in total, something close to 33 total questions. Okay. It's not going to be any longer than the other ones. It's going to be the same length. Um, there should be a different proportion of true-false and short answer. Uh, the true-false questions are a little faster, I think. So by putting more of those on, um, I might, I don't know, I might be reducing the time it takes you to to uh, to take the test. Just got an email, so let me make sure it's not a student. Nope. Okay. But it is an important email. Um, let's see. For those of you that are here, you can keep thinking about questions, um, about the final, about anything else. But for those of you that are here, um, course evaluations are open, I think, right now until May 11th. I think, let me just. Yes. So course evaluations are open 
until May 11th at 11.59 p.m. So uh, if you haven't taken that yet, uh, you can. They're anonymous. I don't see who writes what. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you to give me feedback in that, uh, in that manner. So if you have good things to say, if you have bad things to say, if you have meh things to say, anything is welcome. Uh, anything is, is beneficial for me to hear. So um, if you have not yet done that, you should have gotten an email about it. Uh, if not, it's on my UAlbany as well. Okay. Uh, you're not required to do it. I can't make you do it. Um, you don't have to. But if you've got uh, a couple minutes, if that's all it takes, um, there's a bunch of like multiple choice questions, and then there's short answer questions. Even if you just answer the multiple choice questions and just click, 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 done, that's perfect. That's great. If you have time to write short answers, that's good too. Um, if you want to make it truly anonymous, be sure that you don't write identifying information in your short answer. Just an FYI. Uh, not that that's happened before, but anyway. Any other questions? Otherwise, we'll move on. It doesn't look like we're going to get more than 10 people today. Okay, and since it doesn't look like we're going to get more than 10, I'll, I'll open this up while you think of any last minute questions, perhaps, before we begin. So the poll question is just, it's just preference. You know, do you have a preference um, for which two-day period you would like the final exam to be over? Um, just like the test, it'll be two and a half hours long. I'll give you sort of a 30-minute window to uh, scan and upload, which you all did great at on the last test. Thank you. And um, uh, so overall, it's about three hours where I won't question you at all. Uh, I suspect I suspect that's plenty of time, um, but maybe it hasn't been in the past. But then again, I haven't heard from anyone about that. So I, I assume that's enough time. OK, it, it's, it's a small set here, but it looks like there's one person left. Uh, that's not going to change things too badly. It looks like Friday, Saturday is the most preferred day, but it's a it's a close one. Okay, that's good to know. I will um I'll think about that. Just let me make a note of it before this all disappears on me. started then uh, and I'm gonna just start us off with another quick poll so the question is which of these is not an identity it's largely a vocabulary question but uh, also a little bit of memory I guess uh, about these things which of these is not an identity?
So an identity is an equation that's true for any input. <clears throat> so we got eight responses, one left out there. So let's think about let's think about um, the last one. We'll just try unit circle again. So we'll we'll put our angle in standard form, which is how our trig functions were defined. So look at the last one, cosine of negative x. So let's let's go some distance around here. So that's our negative x. It means we're going this way. X degrees or x radians, whatever the unit is. The angle positive x is going the other direction, the same amount. And what do we know about the cosine of both of these things, both of these terminal points? Well, we know that the cosine is going to be the same because these two points are vertical. They're the ones directly above the other. So the last one is true for any input x, definitely. The first one, secant. Usually what we said is, you know, to define this thing, this is the reciprocal function of cosine. So just by its definition, this is one over cosine of x. Okay, there's another identity that cosine of x is one over secant of x. Okay. Um, so th this is just the definition of secant. So it's not one and it's not four. And the third one's there to confuse you. Right, but that's the right choice. The second one, nobody guessed, so I'm not gonna go over that. But sine of x, sine of x, squared plus cosine of x squared is definitely one. That's the Pythagorean identity. That's true no matter what angle you have. But if you remove that square, it is not true. And you could quickly choose something. Right, if I remove that square, you wouldn't actually need to search very long to find something that's not true. Like for example, I over four. Just plug that into both. Then what are both of these? Both of these are root two over two. So we have two root two over twos added together, and that equals root two. Is that equal to one? No. So that's definitely not true. The third one is not true. Okay. So the correct solution is sine of x plus cosine of x equals one. That's not an identity because it's not true. This is not true for every pair, for every input rather. Um, I meant pair, sine and cosine added together. Uh, there are angles which work. If you plug in zero, then sine is zero and cosine is one and one equals one. If you plug in pi over two, sine is one and cosine is zero and one equals one. Uh, those angles plus or minus um, multiples of 2 pi, those are the only ones that make it work. Okay, You need those squares there. So this set of sections 7.1 and 7.2, they were all about these identities. Okay, and um, there's a lot of problems related to that. So, um, have you started this homework yet? Have you come up with any problems? If yes, I can tackle those, and I think that might be more beneficial, because otherwise I'm just going to be picking questions that you won't have to do, <laughs> but I can, I'm happy to do that.
write one down just while you think about that. Okay, so this is actually this is question three, just starting off real gently. The you'll notice this is there's no equality here. This is just an expression, not an equality. So the in instructions for this problem are to simplify. Now this seems pretty simple to me. Seems pretty simple here, um, but you know you plug in an angle to cosine, you plug in an angle to tangent. You multiply the two together. That's like three things you have to do. But maybe it's simpler. So let's make an identity. We'll put an equal sign. We'll say this is cosine of t times tangent of t still. But what's another way of writing tangent? What's, what's another way of writing tangent? One over cotangent is correct. That's another way. Not necessarily a good way uh, for this problem, but it's a great way in other problems. Mm -hmm. Something even more fundamental than that one. Michaela, yes, there we have it. Right, we, we define tangent right away as the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate on the unit circle, which happens to be the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle. So this is this is the point. We had an expression, but now we've created an identity. We know this is always true because all we've done is rewrite tangent in an identical way. It looks more complicated but it is always equal to tangent. Okay, so we've created an identity here. And I think this helps us see the simplification because just like algebraic cancellation, we can cancel out these entire cosines. Right, we would just need to sort of think about this as like cosine of t over cosine of t times sine of t. And that gives us a very simple expression. We simplified this into just sine of t. Okay. Now in the uh, in the lecture, I I give I think a weak argument. <laughs> I don't know how often you uh, personally will be writing down trigonometric functions in your life. But if you happen to land a job uh, where you do trigonometry quite a lot, um, and I can think of a couple, not many, <laughs> but if you do, this sort of like identity simplification process can be a pretty handy thing because it'll save you time in your, in your computational side of things, right? Okay, so, so instead of doing three things, computing cosine of t, computing tangent of t, and then multiplying the two together, you do one thing. You compute sine of t. So that, that's a nice simplification. And this gives us an identity. That's always true. Okay, how about this one? This one's number eight. Same instructions. Secant of x divided by cosecant of x. What do you think? And I'll say first, this one's gonna get uglier before it gets better. <laughs> uh, like, like a lot more than this first one did. We're, we're gonna try and simplify this down. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is going to be just one trig thing one trig function just like the top one. But what what are the uh, what are the definitions of secant and cosecant?
Don't be shy. What are they? Secant is 1 over cosine of x. And cosecant is 1 over sine of x. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I can sit here all day. I'm sipping chocolate flavored coffee. So I do not mind sitting here and waiting. <laughs> but thank you for your answers. Uh, so here we go. We, we've got these two definitions of these functions here. So these are definitely always true, which means I can rewrite this in a, in a different way. And we definitely have an identity, something that is always true. Does it look nice? Define nice, right? I think this looks pretty weird. It's like a compound fraction of trigonometric functions. So at this point, what can we do? Well, we can do exactly what we did with compound fractions in previous chapters. Take the denominator, multiply by its reciprocal in the numerator and the denominator. Again, that's just like multiplying by 1. If you multiply something by 1, you haven't changed the numerical value, which means you have another equality and identity. So we're going to multiply here by sine over 1 and here by sine over 1. Okay, that's that's the same again as multiplying by this fraction of sine over 1 divided by sine over 1. That's always 1. And that gives us on top, sorry, on bottom here, a cancellation of this sine of x with that sine of x. And on top, we get sine of x over cosine of x divided by 1. So we're going to leave that out. Does this thing ring a bell? Well, it should. We just used it up here. That's tangent. Well, hey, wouldn't you know, that's kind of cool. We've got tangent of x. Can I copy and paste? I cannot. Okay. Tangent of x, here's another identity for you, is secant over cosecant. That's another identity for you. So you've got two identities for tangent now. Tangent equals sine over cosine. It also equals secant over cosecant. Okay. Okay, questions on these before I move on to more difficult simplification problems. These ones so far have just used the very, very fundamental definitions of secant, cosecant, and tangent. We're gonna get we're gonna get into more difficult identities next. So questions on these? Um, just a real quick point, because I did have an email about this already, about the final. Um, I gave a, a note on the final saying that I was going to place a big emphasis on showing work. Okay? Um, and so you can read that note if you haven't yet, and write me an email with questions if you have them. I'm happy to respond to you. Um, for these problems right here, like these could be potentially problems on the final. Um, th this is pretty much everything you would need to show. Uh, but I'm not looking for exactly this. There are possibly other ways to go about showing these simplification problems. Um, and what I explained in the little note on the final is that the final answer is going to be about 25% of the credit. So if you get that right, that's going to be about 25%. So one out of those four points. And so long as you've shown me your process of getting from there, the beginning, to the end, then you'll get full credit. In this problem, it's literally one step. And as I said, maybe you maybe you did another step in here to finally get there. If you show too many steps, that's okay. I just want to know 
that you knew how to get from there to the end. Okay, now in this, in this last one, I had one step. I kind of had a second step right here that I showed. And you know, if you just went right to here, I can already see the sine over cosine there. I know that's a tangent, okay? So this step, yeah, I probably don't need to show that one. But so long as you showed your work getting from here to there and then here down to here by this cancellation process, that's fine. That's perfect, 100% on this problem, okay? So on the on the test, I'm gonna ask you to show your steps. And, and I'm not looking for you to guess at the solution that I have on my key I'm just asking you to show your steps for your solution, even if it's different from mine, right? I'll, I'll grade it as I see it. I'll play it as it lies, okay? So I, I just bring that up because I already had questions on that and I thought this was a good chance for me to, to show you that. So let me give you another problem where that should be more obvious. So we're gonna get to 18 now. 18 is sine to the fourth of x minus cosine to the fourth of x plus cosine squared of x. And we need to simplify this. So this looks a lot more complicated. <laughs> so powers galore. And right away, I can tell you there's multiple ways to go about this. Okay, so we're, just to illustrate again, we're, we're gonna arrive at some final answer. And on the final exam, getting that correct is gonna be one out of those four points. 25% of the credit. I don't know how you, how you would solve this, but showing your work in your solution is the rest of that credit for the final exam. Okay, even if it's different than mine. As long as, you're, as long as you're showing me correct steps on the way to your solution, it's good. I just wanna see your argument, okay? All right, so now let's see how I might solve this unless you have ideas. On the left, I'm gonna list the identities that I think are pertinent. Do you think you have any ideas? before I start writing. Do you have any identities that you think might work? Here's one that isn't a trig one. While you think about a trig identity that might help us here, uh, here's one that's not a trig problem. But if I have something like this, yeah, that's, that's probably going to be one we're going to use, Michaela. Probably. <laughs> you forgot your carrot on the cosine squared of x, but yeah, that's probably what we're going to use here. Um, if we have something like this, we can rewrite it as something like this. And how can we rewrite things like this? This is a difference of perfect squares. That's x squared plus y squared times x squared minus y squared. That's an algebraic identity. And then Michaela correctly identified this one. This is a trigonometric identity because it involves trig functions. Sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is one. Okay, this one's very important, very. I'm gonna say that one, no, two more times. This is very important. And a new color. This is really, really important. It's called the Pythagorean identity. Okay, it comes right out of the Pythagorean theorem for a triangle with one vertex at the origin, one vertex on the unit circle, and it's just relating that the two legs lengths squared, adding them together equals the hypotenuse length squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem when you just insert what the leg lengths are. This is super important because from this one, 
this is so fundamental one. From this one, we get a lot of others. Okay. So that's enough of that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what you would do first. To me, the first thing I would do is I would say, hey, this is sine squared minus cosine squared, but both of those things are squared, just like I wrote right here. So this is equal to sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x times sine squared of x minus cosine squared of x, right? So this right here, the difference of perfect squares, just like I wrote right here, that's something that we've learned before in previous chapters. I've just expanded that sine to the fourth minus cosine to the fourth. And then we still have to add this cosine squared at the end. And then forgive me for one second, I need to slide things down because the recording is getting cut off there. Okay, the video is getting cut off in the recording. Okay, <clears throat> so this is this is true. Questions about that step? That's a big a big leap. Do you understand how I got from this left side to the right side? It's okay to give me a yes or a no. You understand it? Yes? No, you don't understand it? Yes or no? We had a couple of yeses. All right, that's that's enough for me. So, so now we'll move on, and, and I think it's pretty obvious what we're going to do next. We're going to use this Pythagorean theorem because right here, that's just going to turn into a one, and multiplication by one is super easy. So, one times this. So all we have left is sine squared minus cosine squared plus cosine squared. Okay? And then obviously, if you take a cosine squared away from a cosine squared, you got nothing left there. So this is just sine squared. And I forgot my x here. I forgot my angle. There we go. Okay, uh, I think that's as simple as you can make it. I don't have the solution key in front of me. I, I would guess that's as simple as you can make it. Um, that's one of the, the six fundamental trig uh, functions, just sine, cosine, tangent, the reciprocals, and it's, it's one of those squared. Um, we could use identities from the next section to reduce that power to the first power using one of the double angle identities. Um, but I would say that's going to be just maybe a little more complicated even. So this, this would be an acceptable solution. And if you showed me this work, oh, there you go. That's 100% on that question. If you solved it a different way, that's totally fine too. Totally fine as well. This is just the way that I saw it here. And uh, if you provide a different solution, I'll read through it. And I'll make sure everything's everything's good. And if there's if there's things that are not good, well then obviously there'll be some reduction of points, but well at least then I'll I'll be able to see what you're thinking. Um, some of you I'm sure have seen where you provide an answer on a question, you know, I don't know what problem it was, and I'm like, nope, minus four. <laughs> But some of you, I would hope, have seen also uh, on on tests where you've provided some work, you provided your answer, and I'm like, no. And then I take something away that's less than four. <laughs> Three, if there's like very little work, if, if anything or nothing or close. Uh, two, if you're pretty much there or not quite. One, if you, you are like right there. And sometimes I don't even take away a point if you just miss something something small. So I'm sure you've seen that. Um, so I hope, I suspect that this new grading method is not too different. 
I'm going to erase the question if there are no problems with it. Good to go? Okay. I'll throw another polling question at you just to jog a couple more identities in your brains. So in this one, it's multiple choice. Which of these are true for any angle? And you can choose as many of those as you want. If you want me to write them, write them down on the screen, I can do that as well. Give her two minutes in. Only only six people have responded. <clears throat> so I'll give you another minute here while I work some of these out for us. Eight of us. There's one person. There seems to be one person that's really uh, fallen behind today in several of these questions. If you ha if you do have any problems, just throw a question in the chat. I'm happy to happy to elaborate on anything. stop it share the results here for you okay so number one um, it takes a little bit of thinking here just to like like invent if you will a little bit but uh, the first one definitely is true and I show that work here out on the screen so it, it, whichever way you start from tangent of X times cosine of X you can turn that into sine over cosine times cosine Right? And then you can essentially just cancel out the cosines. So the tangent times cosine is definitely sine. Because that one's definitely true for any angle that you plug in. Okay. 
Um, what about cotangent of x equals 1 over 1 over cotangent of x? Well, if you write it out and you multiply by cotangent divided by cotangent, then you get this fraction, which is just cotangent divided by 1, which is just cotangent. So that's true. In words, this is cotangent is the reciprocal of the reciprocal of cotangent. In other words, if you take a fraction and you flip it once and then you flip it again, you arrive at the same fraction. The last one is also always true because tangent is an odd function because sine is odd and cosine is even. So when you plug in negative x to tangent, the sine allows us to take a negative sign out and the cosine gets rid of its negative sign. And that was something that we've definitely looked at before. So the last one also is always true. Uh, the second most answered question though is this 1 over secant plus cosine. This one's uh, 4 out of uh, the 8 responses. <clears throat> so let's, let's rewrite this a little bit. This is 1 over, actually let's just skip to the definition. What is 1 over secant? That's just cosine, right? So this secant is 1 over cosine. So if you take the reciprocal of secant, which is what this is, if you flip this fraction, that's going to be equal to the reciprocal of this fraction. So flipping this, and that's cosine. And this is just 2 cosine of x. And you would be hard pressed, hard pressed, to show that 2 cosine of x equals 1 plus cosine of x over cosine squared. Because it's not true for any angle. You'd be really hard pressed to show that. But hey, look at that. In just like a few minutes, that's a lot of identities that you just work through. Yeah, I don't know if you were doing that sort of from your gut feeling or if you're working it out like I was here, but that's pretty good. Questions on any of these? questions Still no questions? Okay. All right. Um, well, then, let's see. So we've seen <clears throat> definitions of the six. We've seen those identities. We've seen one application of Pythagorean theorem. Um, and sort of an algebraic identity. Um, it does not get much harder than that except for techniques using fractions. So let's do one of those. Let's see if I can find an easier one here. Okay, this is question 42. This is, this is obviously the answer to everything. So, so it's got to be a perfect question. Um, so this one says verify the identity. So this is actually a different form of question than what we've asked 
before, uh, I've asked to simplify expressions. But this time, you're going to be given an in, you're going to be given an equality, and you're being asked to literally show that it's always true. Okay, so here we go. The the equality is cosine of some angle over secant of that angle plus sine over cosecant of that angle. Now if I didn't write equals something here, this is just an expression. It's not an identity. And if I asked you to simplify this, I know exactly what you would get. Because the book suggests this is an identity. So I'm going to hold you in suspense here. So I'm going to change this. because th And this is the way that you verify identities anyway. So that I'm going to change the question just slightly to, to illustrate how you do this sort of thing. If you haven't done it yet. I, I, one person said they hadn't finished the homework yet. Uh, but nobody else responded about that. So to illustrate how you verify an identity, uh, what an identity is, is you've got a left-hand side, you've got a right-hand side, and I'm just going to write, there's a function here. Um, to verify what you do is you take either the left-hand side or you take the right-hand side and you rewrite it so that it looks identical to the other side. Okay. But you can't work both sides simultaneously. That's sort of like cheating. <laughs> you can't assume they're the same from the beginning. So what you do is you, you pick one side. So in this problem, you don't know what it's supposed to be on the right-hand side. I'm telling you it doesn't matter. What you do is you pick a side. So let's pick this left side. And what we are trying to do is rewrite this in in a way to get this. This is the right hand side. So here's our left hand side. 